Hello, I'm Stephen Farrow. When I was a student a long time ago, there were lectures called something like Database Fundamentals. It was terribly boring, and keeping awake was a challenge. What we retained of lectures were expressions like normalization, data integrity, data modeling, and that was absolutely thrilling. Like all students, I had no practical experience, I didn't quite relate to the examples, and it was all Greek to me. I'm not sure that things have changed much today. Then, perhaps it was the same series of lectures or a different one, there was database programming with that language, SQL, and it was hardly better. What did we learn? Well, there was select, there was from to name the tables, there was where for conditions, there was order by to sort data, and there was that complicated thing, group by, but that was advanced. It really was an exciting language. Once again, I'm not sure that it's much different today. So we had database fundamentals and database programming, and we didn't connect one to the other. And the day when we were given a real query to write in that boring SQL language, we had no idea what to write past select. I have written a book called SQL Success, in which I try to teach databases and SQL differently. First of all, I have tried to reconnect fundamentals and programming. Not boring fundamentals, but things that really matter. The great idea of Edgar Card, who invented relational databases, was that you can operate on what he called relations, and that most people call tables. He defined a number of operations that could be applied to one or several relations, and would result in other relations. For instance, if you have a table of movies, you can restrict it to American movies. What is interesting is that the result American movies could be a table too and you can apply further relational operations to it. In SQL, it would give something like this. And in fact, we can see SQL operations as a kind of assembly line helping us to refine our result until we get what we want. What people usually miss is that operations aren't always meaningful. I'd like to illustrate it with a story which starts sadly with the death of a wealthy old man who owned a herd of camels and had two sons. He left a will saying that his eldest son, Abdel, should inherit half the herd, his younger brother, Sahid, should get one-third, and he also wanted to let one-ninth of the herd to his cousin, Khaled. The only thing was that there were seventeen camels. The three hares tried to find a solution, but there is no way to divide a number of camels if you haven't multiples. It's the same kind of story with tables and results of relational operations. You can apply other relational operations only if you have no duplicates in a result, and if you can uniquely identify each row. In my story, the three hairs went to consult an old man who was famous for his wisdom, and he told them, there is no problem, I'll give you one of my own camels. So, the three hairs now had eighteen camels. Khaled took two, Sahid took six, Abdel took nine, and there was one camel left that the old wise man took back. With SQL, you have distinct and group by that helps you get rid of duplicates and allow you to continue with the operations. Distinct and group by are the eighteenth camel. What I believe is interesting is how you have to think a query, not a simple, basic query, but the rather complicated queries you often encounter in real life. Complex queries are like sets of Russian nested dolls, and they are built from the inside to the outside. Let's take an example. I have a film database in which table movies stores titles, country, and year of release of mini films. I also have a table called People, storing the names of actors and directors, with their year of birth and, if they aren't alive, their year of death. Finally, I have a table called Credits. 
Credits links a person to a film and contains a column called Credited As, which contains A for actor if the person played in the film and D for director if the person directed it. And now the question. What are the films for which, when they were released, the age of the director was less than the average age of the stars? When most students or young professionals are given this type of query as an exercise, they usually suffer and have no idea where to start. And it doesn't make it much better to tell them, this is the answer. This kind of answer is rather scary, especially when presented as a whole. Let me tell you three things. Firstly, unless the question is very, very simple, you will most never have one answer in SQL. Very often, when people tell you this is the answer, it's simply the first query they manage to write that seems to give the right result. Secondly, this particular query could be more efficient. Thirdly, there may be cases when it gives weird results. Let's see the question again. I have an issue with director. Why? Even if it doesn't happen very often, sometimes you have more than one. What shall we do in that case? Only consider the youngest director? Or the oldest one? Or consider the average age of directors? In real life, many problems need to be made more precise. Let's say that we decide that we'll consider the average age of directors. There is another thing that isn't quite right in the question. When they were released, is what you call a false flag. If the director was younger on average than the stars when the film was released, the same was true the year before and the year after as well. It has nothing to do with the year of release, only when people were born. Once again, this is something that you often see. People implicitly associate data that is unrelated. So, basically, we need to find the average year of birth for directors and actors, film by film, and compare them. The first step when you write a query is to precisely define the scope and identify where you will find each piece of data. Age is actually birth year, and that comes from typical people. Whether people are stars or directors comes from table credits, which is the only one to tell us who did what in which film. And since we want a list of films, we'll obviously need movies at some point, but it's not needed at an early stage. At an early stage, we need to consider aggregates. We need the average year of birth for directors, which requires joining credits to find directors, to people to get the year of birth. I'm not too sure that I exactly know what an average year of birth means, but a group of people who are younger will have a greater average year of birth. Obviously, I need the same for actors, since I want to compare both groups. You'll notice that I have what code would have recognized as screen relations, without any duplicates, and with an evident identifier in each case, the column called movie ID. At that point, I am going to worry about efficiency. To obtain each result, I have to completely scan table credits to get all actors, and I mostly have actors in my table, then retrieve the years of birth each time. And I'm going to do something similar for directors. I have to scan the table once. Perhaps I don't need to do it several times. What I'm going to do is merge both queries into one and dispatch the years of birth to one column if I have a director, and to another column if I have an actor, returning nothing, null in SQL, in the other column. Aggregate functions such as AVG that computes the average ignore nulls. And finally, I get for every film the average year of birth of directors in one column, and the average year of birth of actors in another. Once again, I have a clean relation with movie ID that uniquely identifies it row. Now, what is my main filtering condition? The fact that directors are younger than actors. In other words, that their average year of birth is greater than the average year of birth of actors. It's a condition in aggregate values that I express with a having clause. 
After filtering, I basically have my answer. All of that remains to do is to join to retrieve some more user-friendly information than with ID values. I just have to join with table movies, display the information I have about films, as well as the various edges when they were released. A final layer of polish, which is just an order by so that everything looks better, and I'm done. The query isn't particularly simple, but by building it bit by bit, we obtain relatively simply something complex that precisely answers the question. Far from being boring, SQL and databases are more like a game of chess, in which you need to think ahead and decide what to do next at each step. That's how I teach SQL in SQL Success. Sample pages are available on the companion website. Thank you.